Okay, this video is going to be about how to uh, create rain. So I'm going to show in the second room that he's going to be outside. So ground's going to be grass. Then you're going to have um, the walls are going to be saturated with water, rain coming down on them, and then the sky is going to. Um, you'll see the sky and you'll see the rain coming down. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So he's about to go to the second room. See what I'm talking about now. I got rain coming on the rocks there. You got rain in the front of you coming down. And you also have sky. See the sky up there. <clears throat> and you're able to, you know, shoot of course. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then also this this wall is kind of like 3D because it wraps around. And that's it's basically a flat wall. It just it wraps around in square formation. Also, you got rain on the door too. See, it's coming down on the door. You could, um, if you wanted to, you could put rain on the floor if you wanted to. Um, but and the only the way you could do that was um, basically. What I talked about before was with the pit, how the pit animates on the floor. So watch my video on how to do a pit. Um, it's, it's a red circle pit, and when you go over top of the pit, you get you get hurt. But that's animated using a sprint. So watch that video, and then if you if you watch that video, you should be able to um, make rain on the floor if you wanted to, to make it animate. But since I got grass, I didn't want to show rain on the ground. And see the sky up top, and I'll show you how I do the sky. This might be a two-part video. Let's see how far I get with this one. Because my camera only takes up to like 20 minutes. Okay, so... Let's show you, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so... The first thing... Um, and watch my video on uh, animated torches on a wall because that's the same setup as I did for the rain on the wall for I have rain here texture underscore wall two there's rain there and then texture wall three there's rain there too and it's, it animates it's in different spots the rain so like I said I'm not going to explain this um, because I've already explained it in my other video dealing with torches, how to animate torches on the wall, so watch that video and then you should be able to do the, the rain for this video. Um, but it's the same concept, you know. And then for the floor in, this, in the second room, I got uh, grass, which is kind of saturated with water. I didn't texturize that, it just, it, it's done by airbrush. I just airbrushed it. And I just made sure that there's no seams, pretty much no seams around the corners here. So when it when it um, when it stacks up on this side, this side, this side, this side, um, and the, on, the, on the game itself, it, it doesn't show too much of a seam line around the square. Same same concept with the the sky. This is the sky. So around this the the, the square, I try to make a black smudge outline around it so when when it um stacks up in the game it will stack up on all sides of the square so it will make it longer of course so that that way you don't see too much of a seam so i just try to make a black fuzzy line around the, the perimeter of the square so that way when it stacks up on, on all sides because that's what the game will do repeat 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 on all sides of the square that it it blends nicely on the on around the corners here, so that's why I, I try to blend it real well, so it doesn't show a seam line. All right, so and that's width is 256 by 256, so it's bigger than the other squares on here. All right, so in the second room, this is pretty much outside, so you still have the. The walls, 
but instead of um, a ceiling, you have a sky. But um, for fake 3D, um, I was trying to anim I was trying to make a, a spear um, sky, but I can't do that. The spear is strictly for, and I think it's, it's strictly for like 3D games. It won't work for fake 3D. So the ceiling is treated as a sky, but I'll show you how to raise it up. All right, so uh, let's see. So in your your player object, your second player object, I talked about this. You had to have a different player object for the second room to make this work because it's going to be different from the first player in the room. Because the first player, because like I said, the ceiling and the floor are one within the player itself. Okay, so. See, the second player, which is called Object N Player, I have D3D underscore set underscore fog, parentheses true, comma, and C underscore DK gray, parentheses 10, parentheses, or comma, I'm sorry, comma 500, parentheses, semicolon. So, I changed the, this was in the, in um, Object Player, which is in the first room it's it's black it's c underscore black okay so an object so an object player here see it says true c underscore black is that 10 parentheses 300 okay so that's the first room of the in the object player in the second room which is what i'm in now which is outside i created a different character which i've already talked about in my previous videos and you have to do that so you can change the color of the ceiling and the height of it. So, um, actually, the object player, his is at 300. So that means that it's it's darker. So when you go down lower on the numbers here on this, then it makes, it makes things darker. When you go higher on the numbers it makes things lighter so that's i wanted it lighter i don't want it dark because i want to i want to see the sky so i made it 500 you can make it brighter if you want you can make it 700 900 whatever but 500 seems to be good for me and dk gray is kind of like a darkish gray color but you still make out the sky i didn't want to make it too bright that's why it's called C underscore DK gray, so it's like a like a um, darkish gray color. Okay, so like I said, in the object player, it's at three hundred, and that's dark darker. So the ce the ceiling in the first room for the object player. It's a 300, so it's dark, kind of dark. Can't really make out the colors. Well, you can a little bit, but but like I said, in the object in player, it's lighter. So I made it 500, which is lighter, and also I changed the color of the the, the ceiling, which is not a ceiling; it's a sky now. Okay, that's the first thing I did. The second thing I did for the ceiling was I went into the draw event and I in see this location right here I know it's this floor or well, I know it's this floor here but it's really the ceiling and that because that, that's what the code is for game maker 8.1 it's called the floor so what I did here was I made it 120. 120 means that it's going to raise it up, okay? Because in the object player in the first room, under the draw event, it is 32. So it's really close where it's going to hit the, it's going to touch the, the walls area. So in the first room, it's set to 32, and it's going to basically touch the walls. So it's really close to your, you know, face, see where you can see it really clear. And then at zero, zero, that's talking about stretching it height and 
width and height. Width, yeah, width and height, I believe. Height and length is stretching it. That's what, but this is set to zero zero, so that's fine. 32 is how close it is towards you. If you make it, make this 32 like 50 or 100 or whatever, it's going to, it's going to be pushed up, higher up. And that's what I wanted to do for this for the sky so and like I said in the object end player which is the second room I changed it to 120 so I'm pushing it way up because it is sky you don't want it too close because sky is not close to your face it's way up there so I set it to 120 and then minus 1000 minus 1000 on width and height that will stretch the sky on both lengths and I'm, I'll show you what I'm talking about real quick. What I'm talking about with the width and height, with well, length and width. I think it's length and width. Sorry, length and width. So that's what I'm. I'm stretching it out. So let me kill this guy real quick. Sorry for all the screaming in the background. We have cats in the front room. I got the door shut, so my fiance's kind of screaming a little bit, but it's normal. Typical day. Okay, so what we're talking about here is you now the arrow is blinking out. So you can't really see it right here. Let me let me change the numbers here. All right, I'm gonna change this number to. Let me change it to 100. I'm gonna change it to 100, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And let me let me go ahead and just move this up so it get there quicker. All right. Uh, all right. So, see that? See what I'm showing? The arrow, arrow keeps blinking away. But see how there? You see the black gap and the sky right there. I wanted to make that a spear, but I can't with fake 3D. So it's got to be like flat like a square but see I want to stretch that across because that don't look normal see how there's a line there and there's a line there that's, that's stupid sky does not look like that you know so that's why it's set to minus 1000 with width and height because it stretches it out so depending on your game you may have to adjust those numbers because this room right here is kind of small so you may have to stretch that out to minus 2,000, minus 3,000, whatever, on the width and height. So I don't want to show that black line up there. That looks dumb. So like I said, I'm going to change it back. Go back to M player. Go back to draw. Then I want to change this to minus 1,000, minus. And you got to do, you got to do minus. It, it do, you do positive, it doesn't work right. So minus, minus. But the 120 raises it up, raises it, raises it up. So if I change this to two, it's gonna really be raised up, and I may have adjusted the width, the width and the height again, or length and width. I might have to adjust that again. I don't know because I raised it up higher. <clears throat> okay. See now. I raised it up. It's kind of raised up higher and it's a little darker. The sky. But even, I stretched it 1000 and you can't see the seam now. You can't see that black. Oh, see now you see the black seam. See it? So that means, I, you know, you have to adjust those numbers. You know, see now you can really see it. So you got to make sure. I'm just going to go back to um, 120 here. So don't don't mess with the 32. Don't mess with the 24 here. Um, 
I'm not sure exactly what this does right here, but these numbers, one's, one's the width, one's the, one's the length, one's the width, and then this one here raises it up higher. Or if you bring, if you do 20, then it's going to be really low, and it's going to be hidden against the the sea, the walls, and you don't want that because it's a sky. You want it up high. <clears throat> so, all right. Okay, it looks, I think it looks normal now. Let's see how the sky is a little brighter because it's not so high up. And like I said, you could also, like I said, let me do one more thing here. You could change the color. If you want this color to be gray, you could do gray too. Which will make it lighter, make the sky lighter. Um, and you see how light it is now? Now it's lighter. So it depends on what you want to do with that. Now I don't know how, I don't really know how to make it blink. Because if you want to do a like lightning effect, it, I try to make it work, and it's not. It doesn't. I'm not having any luck with it. You could add a sound effect for the the lightning. I might do that one in the next video or something when I do something else as well. But see how light that is, and it blends pretty nicely too. You don't see the seams too much. A little bit you do. That's why it's probably best to make it a little darker so you don't see. Too much of the seam in the sky. Just depends what you want to do with it. Um, okay, so one more thing to show you is that that rain in the front. <clears throat> so right here, I got called object raindrops. So you do a add event draw, then put you put your code in under the control tab, and all this information here I copied. Um, I graded out the health bar. You don't need that. This health bar, you can take that out. So, in the, I got that information from the the hand events. So you know the um, the hand with the the knife. Uh, hand with the knife had all the information about the health bar, um, the opacity, and the project orientation, the width of. The screen and all the height of it and I just basically copied all that and I put it in called object rain drops and I changed the only thing I, I took out the health bar and then I changed one thing here which was the draw sprint so in like the the object hand it was for the sprint hand hand which is the knife uh, you have the knife in your hand and you have your health bar and all that stuff. So I changed this information right here, the draw sprint. And made that raindrop. And it's at 640 by minus 640. You have to make it minus 640. So that's going to st stretch. Well, that's going to make... you got to make sure your, your screen is... See, the image of the... And the image is in the textures here. Let's see, hold on. Is it... Um, I think it's in. Oh, it's in. It's in the. It's in the sprints. Rain sprint rain. So in here, each of these images here is by is six forty by four eighty. You can't see it. Oh, there it is right there. You can see the rain. See how the rain animates. So each square has its own raindrops in different location. And it's, it's 640 by 480. That's how big the window is for the game. And so I throw that and then I just... And I change the numbers to 640 by 640. So... And also I... 
I made these numbers one because they were two before. Because two would basically um, scale it up and make the raindrops too too blurry, and I don't want it blurry, so I made this one. And then with 640 by minus 640, it it um, pretty much puts it exactly where I wanted that on on screen, right in the middle. And it fits nicely on screen. And when you move, it goes with the character. If, like I said, if I change this, this number to two, two, then it's going to it's going to make the raindrops too big, and it's going to make them blurry. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. That's why I changed the numbers to one one. And I did the raindrops in like a Photoshop program and then I imported it in. See how they're blurred? See how blurry they are? That's why I went with one one, because it really puts it in the in um the same it doesn't scale it pretty much it so I just make it one one. You could I could try zero, but I don't think zero is gonna work correctly. Let let's see what zero does. I haven't done zero yet, so but two two it makes it too blurry. It's too close to the, the face, so it one one seems to work. I don't know about zero zero. Oh, you don't even see it. It's not even there, so it pretty much makes it transparent. So you got at least you got to make it one one at least. Let's make it one one, and if I change this number to five, it's going to position it in a different location, and you don't want it where I have it at because you'll see it cut off. I think it pushes it down or it pushes it up. I'm not sure, but you'll see what I'm talking about. That's why I use 640 by minus 640. See, see how it looks. You can see it cut off. It's too low. So 640 by 640 works. Let's play with those numbers and it worked fine. And see, it's projected at 640 by 480. That's how big the image is. 640 by 6, 640 by 480. I have two images. They animate back and forth constantly. But then I change it to 640 by minus 640 and it works fine. For some reason, these numbers work great. Uh, if I change this to 480, it, for some reason it doesn't doesn't look right, I think. That's why I had to play with those numbers there to get them working. And after this, let's see, I should be done with this video. Yeah, see, it's, it's too, it's too, it's too blurred and it's too low. And if you wanted to, you could you could um, put rain on the you could put rain on the your weapons too if you wanted to. But like I said, you would have to animate the you have to do the same thing as go into your image of your knife, and you you would have to duplicate your knife again because you don't want rain on your knife in your first room. So you would have to make another object hand with with um, animated animated. Uh, raindrops on it so it's up to you if you want to do that or not I wouldn't do it it would just take up more space and it's not really necessary all right uh, I think I explained everything in this video I'll give you the code on YouTube and give you this game maker 8.1 so you can download it and mess around with it um, yep everything else I talked about I don't think I left anything out. Like also with um, the door, like I said, I animated the door. The door, there's two there's two doors that have rain on it. And I, it's the same concept with what I did with the torches, how I animate. So watch my video on the torches and you should understand. If you understand that, then you should understand how I did the door and the walls with the raindrops animating. I use timers. Or alarms, anyways. Oh, and also make sure that the 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 raindrops are in the room. This is called this question mark is called raindrop, and it doesn't have a sprint. 
make sure that that question mark's in the room, otherwise it won't show your raindrops on the screen. And like I said, the that wall that looked like it was that wall that was 3D looking, I walk, walked around the whole thing. I just it's a bunch, it's just horizontal and vertical walls connected together to make it look like it's 3D when you walk around it. So it's really just flat walls put together to make it look 3D. That's all that is. All right, thanks for watching.